Hello. Welcome to the first episode of The Greasy Geek. Today I'm going to show you how to repair an Indus GT disk drive using parts for or from another drive. But before we get into that, I would like to first talk a little bit about the Indus GT and the uh, Atari 1050 disk drives. The uh, Indus GT was released in 1984 and it was a pretty cool machine. It was pretty quiet and supported three popular densities at the time. Uh, 90K single, 130K enhanced or medium density, and 180K true double density. The uh, 1050 was introduced in 1982 and was a successor to the Atari 810 disk drive. And it was a bit of an odd duck. Um, it supported two densities. Uh, single 90k and 130k enhanced or medium density. Um, Atari actually introduced it as sort of a middle ground between single and double density. Why I'm not really certain because the drive itself, the mechanism could do true double density. Um, if you added a third party upgrade to it such as the uh, US Doubler, you could get full 180k double density out of it. Why they didn't add it from the start, I don't know. So, uh, anyways, um, a number of years ago, I acquired a uh, pair of Indus GT disk drives. One was in perfect working order. The other one, this one, not so much. Uh, since I had two of them, I never bothered with uh, trying to fix the other one. And then I was talking to a friend of mine about some of the advanced features of the Indus GT and it prodded me to actually tinker with it a little bit. Well, I cracked one of them open and dug around inside and realized that it's pretty much a standard tandem mechanism. And then I had either a uh, Eureka or Dope moment, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, I guess that I could probably use a tandem mech from a 1050 to repair an Indus. A quick Google search dug up a guide by a rich Mir in the archives of the University of Michigan some years back and it confirmed my hunch. As luck would have it, a few years ago I purchased a big lot of Atari stuff from a local fellow here and in that lot happened to be a brand new sealed 1050 disc mechanism. Talk about fortuitous. And also in this episode we got some scans from the March 1984 issue of analog computing, the special disk issue. Um, and as you can see right here, we've got the Indus GT and the Atari 1050 on the front cover. There's a big comparison chart in here. I'm going to scan that in the video later. But I do not have a Reign of Systems 1000 or the Track AT, and so we're not going to cover any of that. But uh, let's get to it. I would like to apologize for the camera constantly refocusing. I didn't realize it was doing it until I went to edit the video. It is my first video and I promise I will get better at it. Here's our new mechanism. And here's where we get into the differences. These cables. On our original drive, we have these three plugs which are labeled J9, J11, and J12. On the replacement for a 1050, we have these two plugs, which are J11 and J10. And on each drive, we have these connectors. Neither one of these are actually used. I'll get more into that later. <clears throat> I 
our new drive even has a shipping protector tab in it. Now to start off with on the 1050 we have to remove the door latch handle because as you can see the Indus GT door latch handle is quite a bit smaller. <clears throat> so we're going to put the small one here. One thing to be aware of on the Indus GT drive, the drive motor wiring is considerably longer than the 1050. You have this versus this. This drive was having issues with the read head. Everything else on the mechanism worked just fine. So, since my drive wasn't having any issues with the motor and only the read head, I'm going to swap the motors. And we'll go with that. So that takes care of the uh, swapping the motor over. Now it's time to pay some attention to the actual differences in the drive and the mechanisms themselves. The original mechanism has a timing hole sensor. This one does not. It's vacant. The center four pins are not used with this mechanism. Place a little cardboard spacers. Cardboard, I say cardboard's more like cardstock. Back here. This cutout right here goes in a notch in the front of the mechanism, right? there. You'll want to make sure you get that in there otherwise the board can short out or you'll crack it trying to put the screw in it and it won't line up. This header here is for the drive motor connection. If you re reuse 
or use the motor that comes on this mechanism. The wires will not be long enough to go under and attach as this does. So you can take these four pins, desolder them, rotate them around, point them the other direction, and the wire will reach. But when you connect it in, the plug has to be turned upside down since the pins are now reversed facing the opposite direction. We're not doing any of that since I just swapped the motors. There is a, yet another difference on this board. Okay, J3. It's kind of difficult to see, but there are six wires on this plug for the stepper motor on this mechanism, whereas the original mechanism only has five. I've actually done this before. The sixth wire has no effect. The drive operates just fine. They're both six pin connectors. Just the one that come from the factory had only five wires. The six pin was not populated. Now reattach the reed head connector. On the front of the drive mechanism, you can see on the original, this is this is the LED. The LED is covered by the front bezel on this one, which it has its own busy indicator made into the front cover. So you can tell the status of it there. Plus, the LED is not connected since these pins are not attached and the front bezel actually covers that LED on this mech. And there we have an assembled Indus GT disk drive. So, the drive is assembled and working. I formatted a handful of different disks in various densities with no issues. I was going to record some video of it in action, but my video capture card is a 22-year-old belligerent piece of crap and it decided it didn't want to work today. I've ordered a new one, but that doesn't do me any good right now. So, what about the missing timing sensor? Well, only one Atari branded disk drive actually had them, and that was the XF551. The 1050 doesn't have one because it doesn't need them. The Indus, however, has two extra features. The first is Synchro Mesh Mode, which is just a high-speed transfer mode. The other was the ability to run CPM. The Atari version of the Indus drive has a Z80 processor in it, and if you had the optional 64K RAM charger board, you could load CPM into the drive, and the Atari would serve as a terminal. I don't know if the lack of a timing sensor is going to cause issues with reading CPM disks or not, but I intend to find out soon. So, if you happen to collect Atari equipment like I do, you probably have half a dozen or so 1050 drives laying around. And if you run across an Indus with a bad drive mech, you can gut a 1050 as an organ donor. Indus also made drives for Apple and Commodore computers, and the same swap might work for them as well. I've included a link to the original guide by Rich Muir in the description, so you can check that out if you would like. I'd like to say thanks to my wife Hillary and my friends Greg and Robert. My wife Hillary 
is supportive in everything that I do and actually encouraged me to make this video. I don't know what I would do without her as she is the other half of my brain. My friend Greg gave me the pair of Indus is Indus Indi whatever uh, some 15 years ago and my friend Robert ran across the large Atari lot that had the 1050 mech in it for sale and immediately called me and if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have been able to make this video so thanks to them and thank you for watching